Hello everyone, this is Gally and welcome to a new episode of How to Draw Dragons. Today we're going to learn how to draw dragons in perspective. But this was suggested by a user, so I'll do my best to explain what I do when I draw. So here goes. I will make a, a, a barrier here just to, to set our scene and in a bottom layer you can ignore all this oh sorry <laughs> I will erase all the other layers so just have like a square to show our composition so here it goes when you think about drawing a dragon you usually just think about making you know your creature like this and simple just standing there and that's all right but I believe that interesting compositions can also create a very visually impacting uh, drawing. So not only can you draw this dragon, but in a very special way. So here goes. When you think about foreshortening, which is what we're going to do today, is more or less like looking inside of a box. So just imagine you have a box. So. Imagine this is the box, and you're looking in or out. This could also be out. So this is a background. You have your mountains, your clouds. This is a ceiling. Yeah, and you could have your trees over here. This is grass, another uh, tree. This is so horrible, but <laughs> so here's another tree right so just try to think of your picture as a box even if it's a lousy box so here goes imagine you want to put a dragon figurine inside it that's the best way to look at it so let's imagine we have the side view of our little dragon would be something like this and try to imagine it in a different position what helps is to grab a figurine of any animal and if you don't have them I recommend to buy one they're very useful I have unicorns and lions and stuff to grab my inspiration so imagine you have your dragon right here yeah so you have different angles this looks very flat and this one looks better because it's 3D so how do you draw 3D things? All right, that's a very complicated thing that I had to learn the bad way because I couldn't understand it. But I'll try to explain it in a very simple way so it doesn't confuse people as much. So, Okay, you have your creature. You already know what design you want to draw or you just don't know when you're going with the flow of your picture. So what I would suggest is that you grab a different color, maybe purple just for the idea and then you can illustrate sorry if you hear a little whining it's a little puppy I adopted so she's crying a lot and here it goes imagine you want your dragon to walk through towards this tree right here so what I would do is to also figure out the scale of your character so scale is very important because it speaks of the size of your creature. For example, if you make him like this, it's so small. If you make him like this, he's medium. If you make him like this, he's big. And don't be afraid to get out of the box, literally. You can make the box bigger, bigger than that. So to make a dragon work, uh, walk towards the tree, you can make his face here and then his torso would be in the front of your picture of your box or your picture so you have his head okay this looks weird wait that is so cute okay so we have our dragon here and he has his face 
and his body is facing towards us, so it's closest. The furthest your animal goes, the smaller the body will look. So, you can change colors. And his legs will be on the back, right here. They wouldn't be here, because it would look flat, and that's not the way perspective works. If you draw something like this, it looks strange. As if you just pasted a sticker here. So, no. The wings are complicated as well, but for this video, we're going to draw them facing that way, right here. And the tail, for example, will be like this. So you see, it looks like he's looking right at us, and it's very different than anything that looks like a sticker. So I'm going to make the comparison right now. Let's hide our little dragon and our box and this. So we have it here. For simply simplifying reasons, I'm going to draw without the box, but that was just an example. So create a new layer or anything you're sketching or grab your pencil, anything you can and draw many different animals facing you and facing backwards or maybe coming closer to the camera imagine you're holding a camera so you're holding your camera right here and it's pointing towards your character so the the character is looking like this from the top right so the closest thing to your camera would be the head so that will look bigger, and the further it is, the smaller it looks. So, if you have a dragon looking right at you, with his happy smile, his face is right in front of the camera. So if the camera was looking up, it would look different, but for example, if you're looking at the front, his neck will look further away, as if it was moving in that direction. And try to imagine the figurine, or look at it, facing the camera. So if you were to draw his butt, it will go on the back, and the tail will be smaller than normal, and his feet will be looking right at you. So this is the front view, and then we can draw a dragon looking to the sky, for example. His head will be the furthest thing away from the camera. So you will do a smaller neck and then a bigger torso. The closer it comes to the camera, remember, things become bigger. Of course, not a very deformed dragon, but... Remember, things in perspective can look deformed because of the angle. So, for example, you have the feet and the tail looks huge in comparison to the rest of the body. So you have his feet and I don't know, he has wings, right? So the wings would be here and they look huge over here, but very small over there. So they look small here, huge over here. What I'm trying to show is that what is closer to the camera or where you're looking at becomes bigger. And I have another tip for you. Imagine you want to show when you color that your dragon or creature is far away. So what I would do in a different example is to show you what I, what effects I use to make my creature look further away. So let's see, imagine we have our dragon. I will color him just for this tutorial purposes. So he's looking right at the camera with a big neck and then we, we make his body smaller the further away he is. So 
he has very small feet anatomically incorrect but remember this is just an example so he will look funny so imagine his feet are there that's his back and then his tail goes like this all the way there okay so of course it looks deformed but that's that's the point of perspective okay so we're going to color this baby I will erase other layers I will move him here and we're going to color okay so create a new layer underneath and grab your color maybe blue or purple I don't know so it won't be very beautiful and my Photoshop is lagging so please ignore the coloring and let me teach you magic so here it goes so imagine you have your coloring already decided and well for more impact I'll put purple this is so beautiful so beautiful okay so thanks Photoshop okay here it goes so you have your dragon and he is looking at the camera from an angle a specially chosen angle so he's looking from this side the camera is pointing at him from here and you can see he's bigger and then smaller over there so it helps to imagine him in a path such as this okay all right so what I do when I make my creatures is I play with colors so for example if this leg is on the back or is not looking towards my light source let's say the light comes from this way okay. so the light is coming from this way right so it hits his body here and here so what I will do to make him look less flat and more appealing would be either to lighten or to darken the shade of the colors. So for example, this leg is the furthest away and light is not touching it, for example, I'll just cover it up. So this leg as well. And the wing that's in the back. So play with colors to help your perspective. Coloring and lighting and, and shadows help so much when you want to create something. To make it look 3D, you have to play with lights, shadows and such. That is another subject, but it does help in this. So, the other thing I do to help people feel like the animal is getting closer is I use a filter, a blurring filter. I don't think this is exclusive to Photoshop. But if you're using digital art, which is what I use, maybe this is the best for you. If you're doing traditional art, mm, I cannot help you with the blur. But there are different ways to make your picture look uh, like it's further away, and I will show them to you. But first, let's use the iris blur, for example. What I use is I grab the iris blur here, and what it does is it selects what you want to have in focus. So I want the head and the paws to look in focus. What I do is I move this. And I'm sorry this is so slow, but here it goes. So what I want in focus is this. And as you can see, the back part is blurred. And you can add how much blur you want, maybe more. And you click OK. And it takes a little while, but it blurs it. What this does is that it helps you see the creature more clearly in the front, and then in the back it 
blurs. It goes away from focus, which helps the illusion that your creature is in a space that's 3D. Of course, this looks so simple, but when you see one of the bigger uh, images I've made, you'll see what I mean. And I will go to my website, shameless self-promotion, joking. I'm going to show you one of the pictures I've used. So he could be flat, he could be looking flat, but he doesn't because the furthest the wing is, the lighter the color and it's blurred, such as the tail. The tail is the same. The background is blurred and the wings. So as you see, I've used what I just told you in this picture. Instead of looking flat, it makes it look like it's looking at you. And that's good. So we're going to finish this example by just letting you know what other tips in traditional media you can use. So this one was digital only, because I use Photoshop. But if you're using pencils, if you're using, I don't know, watercolor or anything, there's also some tips. So last, I'm going to show you what to do when you're doing this, but in traditional media. So assuming you already drew your animal and you want to color, what I would suggest is having the bigger lines and clearer frontal view with bolder lines. So if you're drawing the face, have it done with clear lines, bold strokes. If you don't do lines, have bolder color on this. Have your creature look clear in the front. And when you're drawing the back, try to make your lines lighter. Of course, the furthest away, they become lighter. That's for traditional media. It also works with digital. So make it lighter. And the furthest away it goes, if you can use it, draw less lines. And then when you color, it would look as if this is fading away. And this is the, f the focus. So, if you liked, please subscribe and share. There's also a new thing. If you want to be updated to my new uploads, please click the bell icon in my profile next to the subscribe button. Yay, it will let you know when I post. So, thank you for watching, guys. Have a good night. Bye-bye.